Here, a controversial and thought-provoking documentary from filmmaker Martin Durkin questioning the view that humans are changing the climate. It's the great global warming swindle. Humans are not the main source of carbon dioxide. Humans produce a um, small fraction in the single digits percentage-wise of the CO2 that is produced in the atmosphere. Volcanoes produce more CO2 each year than all the factories and cars and planes and other sources of man-made carbon dioxide put together. More still comes from animals and bacteria, which produce about 150 gigatons of CO2 each year, compared to a mere six and a half gigatons from humans. The current warming began long before people had cars or electric lights. In the past 150 years, the temperature has risen just over half a degree Celsius. But most of that rise occurred before 1940. Since that time, the temperature has fallen for four decades and risen for three. There is no evidence at all from Earth's long climate history that carbon dioxide has ever determined global temperatures. In 1991, senior scientists at the Danish Meteorological Institute decided to compile a record of sunspots in the 20th century and compare it with the temperature record. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for four decades until the 1970s, and then rose again after that. When we saw this um, correlation between the temperature and solar activity or sunspot cycle lengths, then uh, people said to us, OK, it can be just a coincidence. So how can we prove that it's not just a coincidence? Well, one obvious thing is to have a longer time series or different time series. Then we went back in time. So Professor Fries Christiansen and his colleagues examined 400 years of astronomical records to compare sunspot activity against temperature variation. Once again, they found that variations in solar activity were intimately linked to temperature variation on Earth. It was the sun, it seemed, not carbon dioxide or anything else that was driving changes in the climate. In a way, it's not surprising. The sun affects us directly, of course, when it sends down its heat. But we now know the sun also affects us indirectly through clouds. Clouds have a powerful cooling effect, but how are they formed? In the early 20th century, scientists discovered that the Earth was constantly being bombarded by subatomic particles. These particles, which they called cosmic rays, originated, it was believed, from exploding supernovae far beyond our solar system. When the particles coming down meet water vapor rising up from the sea, they form water droplets and make clouds. But when the sun is more active and the solar wind is strong, fewer particles get through and fewer clouds are formed. In 2005, astrophysicists from Harvard University published the following graph in the official journal of the American Geophysical Union. The blue line represents temperature change in the Arctic over the past hundred years. And here is the rise in carbon dioxide over the same period. The two are not obviously connected, but now look again at the temperature record and at this red line which depicts variations in solar activity over the past century as recorded independently by scientists from NASA and America's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Solar activity over the last hundred years, over the last several hundred years, correlates very nicely on a decadal basis with sea ice and Arctic temperatures. To the Harvard astrophysicists and many other scientists, the conclusion is inescapable. The Sun is driving climate change. CO2 is irrelevant. 